Hello everyone and welcome to NFL Discussion and Throw It In The Towel. This is a weekly segment where every week I pick one team and throw in the towel on their season. So week 11 has come and gone. And this episode of Throwing In The Towel was probably about the most difficult one I would say of the season. Uh, mainly just because I was a bit torn in terms of who I would pick for this week's team. But uh, with that, we'll go ahead and get right into the action. Starting with the AFC East, which has just one team represented this week and that is the New York Jets and the Jets may be ready to end the Zach Wilson era since week 8 the Jets have scored one touchdown and Wilson has struggled mildly over the past month in the Jets last six games Wilson has thrown just two touchdown passes and three interceptions no he's not the only issue with the Jets offense but quarterbacks who complete fewer than 60% of their passes have a hard time holding on to starting jobs. Tim Boyle will be taking over and what might be a one and done addition for Boyle under center just like the Jets playing or hosting Black Friday permanent that's probably a one and done addition as well. Uh, Bills and Dolphins get a win, Patriots run a bye but the towel is already throwing it on them. AFC North, two teams this week. Uh, Ravens and Browns get a win, so we got the Bengals and the Steelers who lost. Ravens, Bengals to the Ravens, Browns, Steelers to the Browns. And um, yeah, for the Bengals, well, this team is probably done. Uh, it doesn't matter what Browning does um, at the quarterback position or not. There are just certain players that NFL teams cannot afford to lose, and Joe Burrow is one of those uh, players just like Patrick Mahomes uh, and as if losing Burrow wasn't bad enough the Bengals have a good old schedule the rest of the way every team they play from here on out is 500 or better and the Steelers have been outgained in every game this season over the first nine games of the season that didn't stop them from winning six times um, Sunday in Cleveland though the Steelers were unable to make it seven out of ten maybe Pittsburgh can finally outgain a team when it faces a Joe Burrow less Bengals in week 12 it will try to do so with a new offensive play caller after Matt Canada was showing the door um, on Tuesday so a long expected um, yeah I think I think yeah there was there was quite a bit of anticipation for, you know, what, or quite a bit of uh, chatter about Matt Canada and, you know, does he get fired, when does he get fired, that sort of thing. It, it happened, um, and now we just get to see what does, and now we get to see perhaps a different side of the Pittsburgh offense. AFC South, no representatives this week. Texans and Jaguars get a win, Colts run a bye, and a towel was already thrown in on Titans last week. AFC West, the Chargers and the Chiefs here, and just about everything that could go wrong for the Chargers did in Week 11. It's not just that they lost not a close game, 5 of their 6 losses have come by a combined 14 points, or that their poorest pass defense allowed a 300 yard passing day to Jordan Love. Uh, the team also lost its top edge rusher when Joey Bursa was carted to the locker room with what appeared to be a serious foot injury. Granted, it's not a serious or season-ending injury, but it will require a stent on the IR. We'll be back in four weeks' time, TBD, but a blow to to a already terrible Chargers defense. And Justin Herbert continues to do all that he can to try to will this team to victory, but when your wide receivers are dropping passes, especially a couple, or at least two to three touchdown passes, yeah, you're just not going to win a game. It's just not going to work out that way. Uh, and the Chiefs, well, they might actually have a problem, and that's not the wide receivers just aren't it good. Uh, the Chiefs are going to make the playoffs and will probably win the AFC West, but once the postseason starts and they have to face a team like the Bills or the Ravens, those deficiencies at wide receiver could be a problem. So yes, the Chiefs are still the Chiefs, but the wide receiver issue, they got by last year with it, doesn't look like they're going to get by with it this year. So the division representatives this week, the Jets in the East, the Bengals in the North, and the Chargers in the West. Who is the team of these three that represent the AFC this week? It's the New York Jets, and that should really be no surprise, uh, given everything that's happened with them. Uh, over to the NFC East, no representatives this week. Uh, the Eagles and Cowboys got a win, while well, the towel water have been thrown in on the Commanders and Giants. NFC North just one team this week and that's the Minnesota Vikings and the Josh Dallas field goal story doesn't end simply because the Vikings lost to the Broncos. The quarterback still has a squad in position to win or still had a squad in position to win late in the fourth quarter but the defense broke and allowed a touchdown as the two men weren't near. Granted Dallas committed a couple turnovers which led to six points and a one point loss. However the fumble came courtesy of what 
was deemed or I think yeah what was deemed an illegal hit uh, from Kareem Jackson that resulted in him getting suspended again I don't necessarily I mean yeah it, it, you know can't have guys taking shots to the head or you know trying to can't be having those kind of hits but I mean also in some instances too it's just like what is he supposed to do just well but I also do kind of have that question of what he's supposed to do there I don't know it's it's always an interesting situation with those uh blows that they had some of them are quite obvious some of them are just well the defender's best effort to avoid it but it still ends up happening anyway because it's hard for these guys run when they're running as fast as they are to try to maneuver uh, NFC South Tampa Bay Buccaneers this week uh it's a tale of two seasons for the Buccaneers the first a happy tale uh winning three of their first four games and rolling into the bye in first place the second tale not so happy uh one victory in six games falling by 13 to San Francisco on Sunday for all their recent struggles the Bucs are still just a game back at the Saints with a head-to-head -head win in the bank but Tampa Bay is going to need to start uh, uh picking up some wins or that week four victory against the Saints isn't going to matter much uh, NFC West, the Seahawks this week, uh, lone representative. It's bad enough that the Seahawks blew a fourth quarter lead in Los Angeles and lost to the Rams for the second time this year. To fall a game back of the 49ers in the NFC West, uh, yeah, yeah, lost to the Rams for the second time this year to fall a game back of the 49ers in the NFC West. But that may be the least of the Seahawks' problems in the loss. Uh, Geno Smith suffered an arm injury that leaves his ability for Thursday's critical matchup with the Niners in Jeopardy. Granted, indications, early indications anyway, point to him playing. Uh, that isn't the only issue the Seahawks have, though. Uh, Kenneth Walker suffered an oblique injury, and Tyler Lockett's been playing, but uh, has been dealing with a hamstring injury uh, for some time. It would be no easy feat to down the Giants at full strength, but if Seattle's down, uh, uh, Walker, Lockett, and Smith, Seattle has little chance of taking down San Francisco in a forward and forward two games back in the division so yeah seattle can't really be afforded to taking any losses but well uh, if you're stuck starting drew lock then you're probably going to end up taking losses so a triple threat match here another one and this one's all pretty self-explanatory uh lone representatives from each division here all representative who of these three teams is going to be representing the nfc it's the tampa bay buccaneers um yeah i mean seattle and, i mean minnesota is still in this still holds the seventh uh seed while seattle probably not winning the division but still can make the postseason whereas the Buccaneers playoff hopes are entirely contingent on them winning the NFC South. So just to recap this is kind of where we're at 10 weeks in. Uh, last week's team was the Titans and they lost in ugly fashion to the Jaguars and I see all these talk, talk about Mike Rabel's uh, coaching status. I mean the Titans would be stupid to fire him. I don't think he's a problem. I don't think he's at his ceiling as a head coach in Tennessee so do not fire that guy. Uh, so with the recap done, now we get to this week's team. The Super Bowl matchup for throwing in the towel is the Jets versus the Buccaneers. And this was a tough decision, but ultimately I decided with the New York Jets. And the reason why it was a tough decision too was because again, do I concede the NFC South face the Saints and just eliminate the Buccaneers? Or do I concede that Aaron Rodgers is not returning this season to save the Jets? Ultimately decided to uh, concede Aaron Rodgers is not returning this season to save the Jets despite his best intentions It makes zero sense for him to do so uh, There I would say there's no incentive But I guess there is some incentive and that's playoff contention But the Jets don't look like a playoff team on offense They play a great defense, but the defense isn't gonna be able to win them enough games to keep them relevant The offense has got to do something it hasn't done anything so the Jets are just kind of stuck basically they're they're stuck can't really go anywhere whereas the Buccaneers one game behind the Saints can still take the self so that's why I passed from the Buccaneers and took the Jets that is this week's team and that will conclude this episode of NFL Discussion Thorn and Towel if you enjoyed this episode be sure to hit that like button down below